What's up, guys? This is Brave, and I'm back with another review of Growing Up Hip Hop. This is Season 6, Episode 22. The episode is titled Twist and Shout, and let's jump right into it. So first off, let's start with this whole T.T. and Sean situation. Honestly, this thing was boring. It was unnecessary. They're going ring shopping. T.T. is trying to stunt and gloss and be like, oh, yeah, my ring is going to cost $30,000. Blah, say, blah. Yeah, okay, T.T., that's cute and all, but, like, I hate the way she shuts Sean down because I feel like Sean is trying to be funny on the show and she never lets him try to be humorous. Um, yeah, I just don't like that. Her whole vibe, I feel like, since that rumor started with her and Sean, even though I do think that he he was messing around on her in the beginning of their relationship, um, I just really feel like she let that go to her head and now she wants to only show herself like in this super sophisticated positive light it's very strange that was pretty much that boom now let's go ahead and move on to twist twist had a great lawyer and the fact that the judge um wasn't there worked in his favor because instead of him going to jail he got 10 months parole and it's deferred he don't even have to go to texas he can check in via email and be like hey just check it in Um, not getting in trouble. That's it. Like, I said, oh, okay. Good for you, Twist. All right, let's go ahead and move on. I'm sorry I'm moving pretty fast, but I got to get to, like, the real storyline. And y'all know what I'm talking about. All right, so let me go ahead and talk about this whole Angela and Cree conversation that happened. Um, so Angela has moved into her house in Atlanta. You have Cree popping up as Angela's little puppy. I'm sorry. I think it's crazy that everywhere Angela has gone, you have Cree popping up like her little puppy, like her little shadow. When Angela's in New York, Cree pops up. When Angela's in uh, Miami, Cree pops up. Now she's in Atlanta, Cree pops up. Cree, why are you always following Angela around? Like, why is it never you're doing something and then Angela shows up? But you know what? I digress. So first off, Cree tries to bring up Bow Wow. We're not we're not doing that storyline no more. No more. We're done with that. Next thing you know, she ends up asking Angela, like, oh, do you want more children? And Angela's like, you know, sometimes I feel like I do want more kids. Sometimes I don't, you know, being a single mom, you know, SJ can be a lot. Next thing you know, we learn more about Cree. She feels like God is punishing her because when she was 18 years old, um, she had an abortion. And even Angela is like, you did what most 18-year-olds would have done. Um, later on, we learn that Cree, she also got pregnant later and she ended up miscarrying. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of women, this has happened to them. She's not alone in that. And I don't think this is God punishing her. I just feel like the timing may not be right or she may not be with the right person. Now, I find it interesting that Cree says that, you know, right now she's in love and she wants to have a baby. And I'm like, well, who is your man? Where is your man at, Cree? Why don't we get that storyline from you? I would rather see a storyline from Cree where she's actually you know, going through something like her and her man are trying to have a kid. They are seeing a fertility doctor, those types of scenes, rather than her being a follower of Angela and getting involved in Savannah's drama. But we'll get there. That was pretty much that scene. Let's go ahead and move on. All right, let's jump on over to Sequoia. So she's meeting up with her dad as well as her cousin, Devin. Um, Devin looks like Casey. I will say that he is Casey's son, Um, but he also looks a lot like Jojo. I thought that she was going to say that Devin was her brother, but he is not. So Sequoia, she talks to Jojo about him going on the road and how this is basically going to be the first time he's performing without KC by his side. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Jodeci is supposed to be going on tour with New Edition or something like that. And I'm just like, how are you going to perform without KC? 
Like, JoJo led some of the songs, but for the most part, if I can recall Jodeci as a group, KC led most of the songs. But you know what? That's not even what we're talking about. So, back to the real story. Um, You have Sequoia feeling bad. Sequoia feels like, you know, she's watched of the show. She's watched the show over. And she feels like she owes Tanise an apology. Now, me personally, I definitely think that she should go ahead, apologize to Tanise. Because technically, Tanise was just saying something, just trying to be like, super nice and funny like oh yeah I thought that your mom was the daughter because she looks so young like the fact that Sequoia took that and ran with it and caused a big old hoopla about it like girl yeah you was tripping for some reason you had some type of edge on you when you got to the showcase and it's fine if you want to admit that you're wrong no I did not really care for the fact that Her cousin, as well as her dad, was like, well, you don't have to apologize if you don't feel like you should. It's just like, no, she needs to to apologize, especially once she mentioned how her mom is really good friends with Faith. And I was like, you know what? I completely forgot that Jodeci was a bad boy artist. Y'all, so, like, it kind of hit me like a full circle moment. Like, oh, wow. So, JoJo's uh wife, or I don't know if that's his current wife. Let me not say that. Sequoia's mom is really good friends with Faith. If she's really good friends with Faith, Faith is married to Stevie. Keep in mind, Stevie was around back in the day. It's not a good look for her to be having problems with Savannah. It's not a good look for Sequoia to be having problems with people that, like, their families are friends. Like, it's not a good look at all. So I completely understand why the mom is like, listen, squash that beef and cut it out. I get all of that. Now let's go ahead and move on. So we actually see um, Savannah and Cree in the car, and they were talking about who's going to be showing up to the uh, party that Twist is having. And next thing you know, they start calling Sequoia Sequins, And all this stuff trying to shade her. I'm like, all right, clearly there's going to be a problem with these ladies. And they are the first to arrive to the house. Keep in mind, Twist ain't even there yet. So they're the first to arrive to this party. Um, The food is sitting out. I feel like somebody must have left like the doors open or something. because, Like the back doors or something. Because next thing you know, there's a bunch of flies all on the food. Cree is acting super bougie. And she's just like, oh my god, there's flies on the food. Oh my god, oh my god. And it's like, well girl, you don't have to make a plate. You really don't. Like, nobody told you that you had to eat. I know I've been places plenty of times where if the food don't even look right and I or I don't trust who cooked it, I'm just not going to eat. Like, come on now, I'll give me something to drink, give me a soda that's in a can or a bottle and i keep it moving. Like, you could have just did that. Next thing you know, JoJo shows up as well as uh, Lil Easy and his wife, Aaliyah. Can we talk about Aaliyah real quick? I feel like Aaliyah and her swap me outfits, my God, I don't understand. And we're not going to say it's because she's from L.A. We're not going to say that because there are girls in the projects, okay, who dress better than her. There are girls who are in the hood who dress better than her. There's no excuse for the way Aaliyah be showing up on the scene knowing that they're going to film. Like, I don't understand it. And I really need Eric to stop showing up places with a backpack. Like, we get it. You the weed man. But, sir, do you always have to have this backpack on every scene that we see you? Have y'all noticed that? But you know what? That's not even what, that's not even what we're supposed to be talking about. <laughs> I went on a tangent for too long. That's not the purpose of this scene. So, Eric and, and Eric, I'm saying Eric and Easy. Oh, my gosh. Eric and JoJo. Don't even know why they're there. They have no idea. They just think this is Twist throwing a party like something Twist would normally do. But no, 
messy Savannah, of course she knows the tea. So she's like, y'all didn't hear? Oh, well, you know, he had a gun charge when he was in Texas and blah, blah, blah. Of course she has to run it down. Little Miss Run tell that. And they didn't know anything about it. And they were like, well, at least we're celebrating him not going to jail. So next thing you know, everybody's eating or whatever. And Brianna shows up. Baby girl is pulling a full on wagon with art supplies. (laughs) So she comes in. You can already tell that like she must be going through something because baby girl, her hair ain't done. She has on just like a, a tank top. And it looks like she still has paint on her clothes already. And she comes in. It's super hot. Child, I knew it was hot when I was looking at Savannah's edges. Because we are now calling those baby hairs. Her edges were frazzled. Okay? Especially by the time she was going off on Devin and Sequoia. But we gonna get there. Anyways, baby girl's hot. She has a um, little easy bring her basket in or whatever. Now, I completely understand why Brianna has her art supplies, because if I know that I have to film, I'm already going through some things emotionally because my friend's dad died. I need to make sure that I'm good. I need to make sure that I'm mentally okay. And if painting is it for Brianna, that is fine with me. Let baby girl do her thing, right? Cool. So we finally see Twist. Baby boy finally shows up. After being super late, everybody had already ate. And yeah, Twist shows up. And then we see um, Sequoia and Devin there in the car together. And basically, Devin is like, you know, whose advice are you going to take? Basically, are you going to take your mom's advice or your dad and mine, and my advice? And she's like, you know, I'm just going to feel the vibe. And he's basically like, listen, I don't know these people, so we're going to see how this goes. Now, did you guys catch the conversation between JoJo Twist and Easy? Because basically, you have JoJo talking about how, you know, he has the new baby. It's hard trying to balance two kids and also trying to balance, you know, spending time with the kids as well as working. To me, she wants to go ahead and work as well. And then he kind of asks Easy, like, you know, how did you and Aaliyah do it? Because I know that y'all have more than two kids. Was I the only one surprised when he said that Aaliyah didn't work for nine years? Nine years? Girl, what was you doing? Just like really being a stay-at-home mom? My real question is, what was Easy doing, to be honest? Like, what job has Little Easy had for her to not be able to work for nine years? I'm just curious at this point. Because he just got his weed business off the ground. So, I want to know what was he doing before? Like, was he working security? Was he, like, working at a warehouse? Like, I just really want to know what he was doing. But anyways, so Sequoia, she finally gets there with her cousin Devin, and she speaks to Easy or whatever. Easy introduces her to Brianna and is like, oh, you already know that's JoJo right there, whatever. Um, She did not speak to JoJo because she felt like it would be awkward. Clearly because she got into it with titties. And JoJo didn't say nothing back. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. Now, one thing that I did not like is how Aaliyah was like, oh, Sequence is here. Let's go meet Sequence or whatever. Talking to um, Savannah and Cree. And I'm like, how tacky and messy is it that Aaliyah is acting like a little follower to Savannah and Cree? When you have your husband going around introducing these people to y'all. Like, Eric is, you know, trying to be the the nicest person out of the whole group. You know, taking Devin around, introducing him to everybody. While Aaliyah over here being messy and petty and cracking jokes about Sequoia. I'm just like, girl, find you some hobbies and some business because... Cree and Savannah, you already know they don't really mess with you like that. They only really like talking to you because y'all are filming together. Because we have never seen Aaliyah just hang out with the girls like that. Let's be honest. And don't even get me started on the fact that Savannah is like 
cracking all these jokes, talking about some, oh, she can come to me because I'm the hot commodity, all this stuff. And I'm just like, Savannah, what is your issue with Sequoia again? Like, I'm not even understanding why y'all got into it on Twitter. Because her issue with the Simmons had to do what with you? Oh, wait, I forgot. You're the girl who went around and told everybody what her issue was prior to her saying what her issue was. Yeah, you being typical Savannah, being messy. Because when you really think about it, if I'm coming into the situation and I'm new, right? And I happen to mention like, oh, you know, my baby daddy used to mess around with so-and-so, whatever. If I mention that to you, when I come around everybody, why are you being the person that's telling everybody how I feel? When I should be able to vocalize that myself. But you know what? Savannah, this is typical Savannah behavior. So like I said, Eric is going around introducing Devin to everybody because, of course, Devin doesn't know anybody there. However, straight out the gate, you have Savannah. Why was he talking crazy to me on Twitter? Blah, 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 blah. You can clearly see that he's not even on that energy at all. Like, Savannah, you could have totally said, hey, I think you're uh, the guy who was, like, talking crazy to me on Twitter. Like, I didn't appreciate that. You could have said something like that, but Savannah's mouth, my God, I am so ready for somebody to pop her in it because she just shoots off whatever she wants to say, no matter how reckless it is. And like my whole thing while I'm watching this is that it's crazy because you have Savannah, who is the child of Stevie J and kids of Jodeci going back and forth knowing that like their parents probably still have a connection like I would not be surprised if Jojo is still cool with Stevie because Stevie used to like work with Jodeci back in the day and produce on their albums so it's just crazy that they kids is acting like this but next thing you know Twist comes over he's like you know what's going on he's talking to Sequoia and First, he has her uh, have a conversation with JoJo because clearly talking to JoJo was easier than talking to Savannah's crazy self over there. So, you know, she talks to JoJo. She says, you know, I don't really have a problem with Tanise. Looking back on it, I overreacted. She did take accountability you know, for what she did in that situation and how it escalated. You know, Tanise, not Tanise, um, JoJo was like, I appreciate that, but, you know, Tanise is her own woman. You know, she's basically going to have to hear that apology on her own, and she can decide if she wants to move forward with the friendship with you. All right, cool. Next thing you know, we have Twist. He's trying to make peace again between Sequoia and Savannah. So, next thing you know, um, Twist is like, okay, well, let's go ahead and talk to these girls. And Devin is like, you know what? I'll be the bigger person. I'll go extend an olive branch. So Devin walks over there with Twist or whatever. Savannah already has an attitude. Devin is like, you know, I'm just here to extend the olive branch. Like, I just met you. Like, basically, he don't want no problems. He ain't trying to have no issues. Literally, Savannah is like, why are you even talking to me? And I'm just like, he's extending an olive branch. He literally just said he don't want no issues with you. And this is your response. And one thing that I was confused about is the fact that they're mad because Devin has his cousin's back. However, Savannah, you have, I'm going to start out Savannah, Cree, why do you have Savannah's back if that's the case? Like, I don't see no problem with him having his cousin back considering she's the newcomer in the group and everybody else is against her. I really don't see a problem with that. Like, even for Cree to chime in and be like, you got your cousin back, but she way over there doing whatever she doing. Uh, We could be doing, you know, anything over. We could be cussing you out, all this stuff. And it's like, again, that is not what he came over here on. Like, he came over here extending an olive branch. Do y'all not know what extending an olive branch even means? Is that what's happening here? Because it doesn't matter if Sequoia was standing right next to him or not. At the end of the day, he's a representation of that family. 
And he said, hey, we don't want no problems with y'all. Y'all the one with the issue. So after going back and forth a few times, you have Savannah. No, I'm sorry, not Savannah. Devin, he was saying, like, you know, I'm trying to formally apologize. And then Savannah literally says, get away from me. So Devin is like, you know, it's cool. Like, I'm just going to go ahead and walk away. So he walks away. And even Twist is looking at Savannah like she's crazy. Twist was over Savannah throughout the whole rest of this day. Because he literally told her, you need some home training. And he did not lie at all. Savannah needs home training. For sure. And I know that she wasn't really raised with Stevie like that. So I'm not even about to blame Stevie. I'm about to blame her mama. Whoever her mama is, she did a piss poor job raising Savannah. So next thing you know, you know, Devin, he tells his cousin, like, listen, don't even fool with them heifers over there because they are not all what we are. They tripping, basically. And next thing you know, Cree, who could have minded her own business, she decides to come over to where the group is because it's literally everybody in the group except for her, Savannah and Aaliyah, basically. And whoever all, you know, all the randoms that are in the scene. But everybody else is chilling. Here comes Cree. She brings her funny looking self over there. And she came to start mess. Let's be honest. Because she, in her confessional, was like, you know, I just wanted to know, like, why Sequoia has all these issues with everybody. Then Cree literally calls Savannah over. And when Savannah walks over, do y'all catch her when she said, ready, watch this. And then she literally just lights into Sequoia, saying all types of reckless stuff. And I'm just like, girl, you act like you about to fight her. Like, none of this should have led to you wanting to fight this girl. And then after she has called her out of her name multiple times, like literally Sequoia is one better than me. You have Savannah telling her, you need to go take care of your son or something. And I'm just like, where did that even come from? Like, where did that come from? So, of course, that's that pisses Sequoia off. She jumps up. She's ready to fight. Because why are you bringing her child into this? Her child has nothing to do with any of this foolishness. Like, you call her out her name. You want to fight her over something said on Twitter. Like, really, girl? So, here goes the, you know, melee. Everybody's trying to break them up so that they don't have this huge fight. Now, one thing that I will say that I respect about Sequoia is that when Cree tried to jump in, it was like, you brought your son up in the first place. She's like, Cree, I don't have no issue with you. Please don't do this. As in, I'm not trying to, you know, have a problem with you. That is not where I'm trying to go here. Like, why are you getting involved, Cree? Oh, but Cree has so much to say. And the crazy part to me was the fact that she going to tell security and everybody like, I'm not going to touch her. I'm not trying to fight her. I just want to have a conversation. I have four businesses, which is basically saying like, I have something to lose. Like, there's no way that I'm going to try to fight her. And I'm just like, I think it's funny that you try to mention that you have these four businesses. All right, Cree. Now, here goes my problem with Cree. You literally stood in Sequoia's face, and I mean, she was just waving and pointing them fingers all in Sequoia's face. Sequoia is one better than me. Now, when she was like, you got into it with Tanise, yeah, that's a problem. You're going off on Savannah on Twitter. You know, that's a problem. And then you brought up this storyline about your baby daddy, um, Danny Angela, and all this stuff. And I'm just like, so you're listing all these reasons why your friends have a problem with this girl. Or should I say, she has a problem with your friends. You did not list not a one reason why you should have a problem with her in any of this. Why are you writing so hard for your so-called friends? Because let's be honest, within this whole situation, Cree was trying to prove that she has the Simmons back. That is exactly what she was doing. She has to prove that she's ride or die for Angela. She's ride or die for Tanise. And of course, she's ride or die for Savannah. 
Like, girl, this had nothing to do with you. Because let's be honest, the one person who I know for sure is never going to have your back is Angela Simmons. Angela is never going to fight for you. Ever. We literally saw her walk away when you were having a conversation with TZ. She literally walked away. It didn't have nothing to do with her. And she said, because I don't do drama. And she walked away. So you try to go so hard for your little friend, Angela. And Angela would not do this for you. But whatever. Same thing with Tanise. I don't even think Tanise really messed with Cree like that. For her to be like, you were so wrong for coming at Tanise this way. And then her and Savannah. I'm trying to figure out why is Savannah basically the ring leader over Cree. When Cree is supposed to be in her 30s. While Savannah is in her 20s. If anything, you're supposed to be the big sister to her. You're supposed to be telling her, Savannah, you know you can't you can't do this. Or Savannah, you you do it too much. Chill out. That's what you should be doing. But no, you decided to go in Sequoia face and be like, well, no, you brought up your baby daddy and your child trying to have a storyline about Angela. And what you need to do is figure out what you need to do for your son. Why would you say that? And that is basically the same thing that Savannah just told her. So, yeah, now she going to have a problem with you, too, Cree. And what got me was that as she is going on and on, Cree, about uh, the whole Angela dating this girl's baby daddy. Like, somebody, I have no idea who it was. I don't know if it was a producer or one of the castmates. They were like, she already apologized to JoJo for all of this. Like, basically, why are you trying to reiterate a conversation that you have nothing to do with? And Cree's response was, I don't care. I'm just like, girl, go get you some business. You say you have four businesses. Go work on those. Also, did y'all catch the part where Brianna dropped her phone after hearing Cree say that, you know, uh, basically Sequoia can't be mad at Savannah for bringing up her son when she's the one who brought him up or something that she was saying. And when Brianna dropped her phone like that, I feel like she was just like, you got to be kidding me. Like, Cree, how you going to say that this girl can't be mad at y'all or mentioning her son? Because keep in mind. Brianna, she has a son as well. Please know that if any of them heifers would have mentioned, like, Brianna's son, she definitely would have fought them. On site, there would have been no questions because you cannot bring up people's children trying to put them in the mix of, like, all this drama. If anything, that conversation was less about her son and more so the fact that her baby daddy dated Angela. Yeah, there was a child involved because she has a child with that man, but the son had nothing to do with any of this. So Sequoia is like, listen, you'll understand what I'm talking about when you have kids, Cree. Oh, why she say that? Because now Cree wants to fight her. Cree is literally tussling with production and the bodyguards and security while you have Savannah. She basically sneaks up on Sequoia and like hits her or does does whatever that she does to Sequoia. And I'm just like, see, you whack Savannah because you saw all this happening and then you're going to try to like sneak up on her. That's lame. And the crazy part is that we even saw at one point. Cree tried to run up on Sequoia or whatever. And I'm just like, this is a ghetto hot mess. At one point, they basically ruined Brianna's art station that she has set up. They ruined all her stuff. She's pissed off or whatever. And I'm just like, this is really a mess. You even have Twist saying that, like, these people were not raised right. Y'all raised by celebrities. Y'all had money growing up, all this stuff. But this is worse than some stuff in the hood. Like, seriously. And Twist said it correctly. Like, he, these people were not raised right. Like he told Savannah, you need some home training. This was a hot mess. And after watching this, I am Team Sequoia. I am officially done with Savannah and Cree. I'm not interested in anything that they're talking about. But let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.